Today on the channel, I'm going to show you how to change strings on a Floyd Rose equipped guitar. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to change strings on my Jackson. I believe this is an SL2Q. This is in Northern Lights. She's a beauty, right? So I'm going to show you all how to change strings with a floating Floyd Rose system. I get a lot of questions from people all the time asking me, uh, man, you should show a video on how to do a, a Floyd Rose string change. I don't understand it. So I'm going to break this down. I'm going to try not to get into the minutia and like the uber uber super tight details but i'm going to give you all the information you need to know hopefully in a quick and sensible fashion uh, first and foremost let's take a look at what you're going to need okay so we have a set of strings we've got some pliers these are optional we may not need these you need a screwdriver so you can take the back plate off the guitar you need a allen wrench that will fit the the uh hex head screws for the locking nut and the tremolo system. Got to have a string cutter and uh, preferably a string winder, a tray to put your parts in. You might as well put some lemon oil on the neck and polish the guitar while you've got the strings off of it. So is that, that's what this is, some 65 lemon oil and uh, cleaner. And you need a rag uh, to, to stop, to uh, block the tremolo system so it won't fly off the guitar. And your favorite beverage, what I've got here is my coffee and my Marty 5150 cup available at the merch store in the description below. So there you go. <laughs> okay, cool. So there's our parts and uh, what we need. Not our parts, but our uh, accessories that we're going to need, our tools. Uh, first, let's take a look at the uh, Floyd Rose system. So they call a Floyd Rose system uh, a floating system floating because you can pull up on the bar and you can, you can dive bar down. So you can go sharp and you can go flat. The a Floyd Rose that's floating has a routed out cavity on the back of the guitar that allows the bar to go back into the body so you can pull up on the bar. And floating tremolo systems uh, are a little tricky because when you take the strings off of the guitar, as you take the strings off, the bar is going to come up like this and it's going to, you know, it can fall off the guitar if you don't block it, if you don't put something underneath it, which I'm about to show you that. But, uh, as you, uh, when you string the guitar back up, the tremolo system is going to dip down like this as you string it up. And a lot of times people will change gauges of strings. On this particular guitar, I've got nines, and I'm going to put a set of uh, hybrids, which are a cross of uh, tens and nines together. All right, so they're, they're, they're thin nine gauge strings on the top three strings, and the bottom low strings are 10 gauge, a little bit heavier. And what that's going to do is going to it's going to set this guitar off a little bit. Uh, it's going to bring this bar uh, probably forward just a little bit too much. And that's what happens is you wind up getting your your bar uh, coming up like this. As you can see, this one isn't this one isn't set up exactly right now. I've never changed strings on this guitar, and this is how it was when I got it. But the bar should be even like this, okay? But right now it's kind of recessed back into the body, which is not completely accurate and when you put heavier gauge strings on a Floyd Row system like this, after you've had lighter gauge, it'll pull forward like this. And it, what it does is it causes your action of the strings to come up off of the fretboard like this. And your action will get higher and your, it'll, the playability will stink. When the bar is back too far like this, it pulls the string gauge strings closer to the fretboard and it can actually fret out and cause buzzing. Okay, so that's one reason you want this to be flush like this, so it will be uh, just nice and even across the frets. I'll talk about how you do that here in just a moment. So let's begin. First, we're going to do is uh, block this tremolo down with a rag and take these strings off. Okay. Okay, so the rag that we had in our supplies, I'm going to take this rag. I'm going to take it uh, and push, push down on the bar like this, and I'm going to just stuff the rag underneath here, okay? There's other 
you can get tremolo stops and foam and different things. It doesn't matter. I'm showing you what you can do by using some of the some of the uh, tools and uh, accessories from your own house. If you don't know what you're doing or you don't have a lot of stuff, this is an easy way to do it. And what this does is it protects the bar from falling off of the back of the the guitar. Because when you take all the strings off the Floyd Rose, the only thing that's going to be holding the Floyd Rose onto the guitar are these two mounting bolts, okay, these screws. And there's just a little bit of a razor edge on this bar. And it can, it can come off the guitar. And it can ding your, your paint uh, when that happens. Uh, your springs can come off the back of the guitar and that would really, that'd really stink, you know. So let me, let me show you the back of the guitar and I'll give you a little bit of insight on what we're talking about regarding the springs. Okay, so on the back of the guitar, when you take the plate off the back, there's usually six screws. You take the plate off the back of the guitar, and this is your the bottom of the Floyd Rose. This is the Floyd Rose um, block. Okay, this is the block of the Floyd Rose. Now these little holes hold your springs, and this is called a claw. And the claw is what you attach these springs to. If you've got three springs or two springs, what that does is it provides the right amount of tension on the block and the bar to keep it level. We talked about it being level earlier on the face of the guitar, the top of the guitar, right? So later on when we put these later on when we put these strings on this guitar, it's going to pull this bar forward a little bit, which means this bar, this block is going to go this way because those strings are going to pull on this bar and bring it bring it down lower. So what we have to do to compensate for that is you know you can tighten or loosen these these screws. These screws move this claw either this way or back this way. So when, when you loosen up these screws this claw is going to go like this and what that's going to do is that's going to that's going to cause the bar to go down you know even further. So if you tighten them up if you put heavier gauge strings on it what it's going to do is going to pull back on this bar and it's going to pull that bar up to a more of a level position so when you put heavier gauge strings on a guitar it's going to pull the bar down so you tighten up these these claw screws and it will straighten it out we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail in just a few moments when we get the strings on it okay so here is the back of the floyd rose this is where your allen wrench goes into let me take this uh this rag out okay so these these uh, screws right here hold the string into the saddles. So these strings do not have a ball on them. You've got to cut the ball off the string and then stick the end of it into these little sections right here. But to get the string out, first you've got to loosen up these saddles, or not saddles, but these screws, and this little metal block will, will cause the string to get loose and pop out of this Floyd Rose system. You can take um, some string cutters and cut all these strings off as well and then take it out. But what I'm going to do, what you have to do if you do that, is block it. You don't want to do it without, without blocking the tremolo system because on the back of the guitar, those springs will get real loose or real tight. They may pop off, causing your bar to come off the guitar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen each one of these up, okay, like this. doesn't take much. Okay, and now watch, this string comes out. Now my advice is to tighten it up by hand again because if you flip the guitar over, this little metal block will come out of this saddle. This little metal block is just a, a little square piece of metal. And if you lose that, you gotta buy another one of these. You can buy them in packs of six, but they're, you know, it's probably like 10 bucks. But you don't wanna lose this because if you lose these pieces, you'll be in a miserable situation, okay? All right, so I'm going to take, I'm just going to, there's many ways you can do this. There's more, more than one way to skin a cat. I hate doing tech videos because there's always that one guy in the comments or two guys that says, well, what you should do is you should get a little cutter tool and a foam block and blah, blah, blah. It's like there's more than one way to skin a cat. All right, so I'm going to take these strings out of the saddles, okay? Now I'm going to tighten these back down just to protect 
these little square blocks from come falling out because I may flip this guitar over because we're going to polish it and shine it up. So there, it's just hand tight right now. now I'm going to put this rag underneath here. I'm keeping my hand on this bar because it's, I'm keeping it on the guitar and those springs are causing it to have tension. You're not going to hurt anything by doing this. Okay, so I put this, this piece of cloth under there so now we're stable. We're good. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take, I'm going to spin this around just to show you what we're going to do. This is the nut of the guitar. So the locking nut is this device. And you have to loosen this up, loosen these up. With a Floyd Rose, a locking Floyd Rose system on a guitar, the nut locks and it causes tremendous tuning stability. So you can use your whammy bar as much as you want and not go out of tune. So when these are locked down, you cannot use your tuners. You have to use the fine tuners that are on the Floyd Rose system, which we'll get into later. Now this is my metallic magnetic parts bowl that we were talking about. It's very important to keep this stuff safe. You don't want to lose any of this stuff because it stinks when you got to run down to the music store or go on Amazon and wait a few days. These are the screws that came off the back of the guitar for the back plate. Okay, so I'm putting those in there as well. Okay, this is magnetic so nothing will fall out. So as you can see there's a little magnet underneath there. Okay, so now that we've got these strings released from the locking nut, which you can do. I don't think these are locking. Nope, they're not locking tuners. Cool. Now they just come out, right? I don't put many winds on my strings when I wind them around uh, the, the tuning pegs when I have a Floyd Rose. Uh, but you, it's a, probably a good idea to put a few winds around the the tuning pegs because if you ever break a string down near the bridge you've got extra string and all you've got to do is loosen up your locking nut and then untune it a little bit and pull that string towards the Floyd Rose and you can dip the end of that string back in the Floyd Rose system and you don't got to buy another string. Now if they break up here then you got to change strings or a string but anyway. So then, now it's ready to go. We've got the strings off the guitar Let's uh, put some uh, lemon oil on the fretboard and polish this guitar up. Okay, sometimes what I do is polish my fret wire. I've got a little fret protecting tool that goes over the frets and I take some fine sandpaper and some fine steel wool and polish my frets. These frets are not that dirty, but I've got my, uh, my fret little fret protector thingies at my shop where I work. So I'm not gonna polish frets tonight. So this is a ebony board, I believe. It looks really dark. I believe this is ebony on this guitar. And uh, man, oh man, it looks good. What I'm gonna do is just take a paper towel over this. And then uh, Probably should spray this stuff on a cloth rather than the guitar, but I always, I'm old school, man. I just spray it on the guitar. It's not going to hurt anything, right? So we're going to spray it down. Cool. Let me get a paper towel and uh, wipe this off. All right, it's always a good idea to check your strings when you open them up. Make sure they're all here. Okay, and it's also a good idea to have extra strings just in case you break something. I remember when I started playing guitar, I've been playing guitar now for almost 40 years. And I've been changing strings on Floyd Rose systems since the mid 80s, man, late 80s. And I've broken so many strings, especially when I was younger, even as even older, you know, you break strings, but I've broken a lot back in the day and then I'm stuck. I don't have a, a B string or a high E or whatever, what have you. And then that'll put a damper on, on your whole evening. So that, that sucks. So I would recommend having extra strings just in case. But they're all here and they're ready to go. So let's get these things ready to install. Okay, so we're going to start with the low E string. Okay, this is a 46 gauge in this hybrid set. So this string has got the ball on the end of it. 
So that has to be removed. We have to castrate this string, okay? So we're going to take our cutters and uh, just snip the end off of that string like so, okay? Hang on to these and don't lose them. If you step on these things, you will, um, you will hate life. And if, if, you know, if you're married or you got kids or whatever, if they step on it, you'll never live it down. So throw those away, uh, you know, keep them handy. All right, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna move this rag over just a little bit out of my way, okay? What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this this screw right here and we're going to loosen it up okay we're going to loosen this baby up what that does is it pushes it it this little block that we don't want to lose that little block right there it's going to move out of the way and we're going to insert this thing in there okay let me see if i can get a better let me see if i can get a better angle of that right sorry for the camera work but what you're going to do is you're going to put that string down in there like this far down as it'll go okay like that and once you do that once you get it down there nice and even you want to get it in between these slots okay you don't want to get it there's a groove there you see that groove there's this groove right here you want to get that string so it lays perfectly in that groove if you're old like me child of the 80s you got to wear your readers. I can't see crap without my readers. Sorry for the, the camera work here. I'm moving my tripod around. Again, I told you this was going to be kind of a quick rough and tumble video. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten this down like this. I'm going to make, I'm going to loosen this up just a little bit just to make sure I've got this thing all the way in there. Okay. So I got it all the way in this saddle and I'm pu pushing down on the bar so I can I can screw this screw in tighter. Now, a Floyd Rose 1000 has better metals than a Floyd Rose Special or some of these cheap Chinese Floyd Roses that you get on certain guitars. The old vintage 80s Floyd Roses that were made in Germany were really, really strong and made out of good metals. These are decent metals. I say decent. They're not the best, but they're decent. But you want to tighten this thing up tight. You want to make sure your wrench is the right size and that it's snug. And you got to get it tight so this thing doesn't pop out. But you don't want to do it so tight. You strip it out. Then you got to take vice grips and take these things out and replace them. You don't want to strip this. So you got to be careful. All right. So that string is in the saddle and it's not going anywhere. It's ready to string up. So I'm going to show you what we do with that. Okay. So now from this angle, this is the locking nut without the, the locking nut pieces on it. So we're gonna take that string, it's gonna lay in that saddle like that, in that groove right here, okay? We're not gonna put these pieces on until later. So what you wanna do is string this string through the tuning peg, okay? I don't, do, I don't do any wraps on the low E and A strings. I almost never break those. I never need any extra. So take your string winder or do it by hand and then you want to wrap the string over like this, okay? And what I'm doing is I'm getting it, I'm getting it kind of tight, okay? It's not important. It's not important. We're just going to get it kind of tight. I got to loosen it up real quick. I got my bar caught underneath my string. All right, so let's tighten this back up again here. All right. One thing that makes these things so nice and stable is when you lock them down, these strings will not budge. They will not slip. All right, so there, we got it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this thing off. You may wanna wait till later when it's all strung up and locked down to cut yours off if you're not confident in what you're doing, but I'm pretty confident. I've done this 20,000 times if I've done it five times. Um, these are the worst cutters in the world. I've got better cutters at work. Okay, now what we're going to do is repeat this process five more times. Now, don't worry, I'm not going to bore you to death and do all six strings because it's the same thing. 
six times in a row. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo this screw again. What that does is that loosens up this little block in here. Okay, now I'm going to stuff this back under there because I need to get my, I got to free up both my hands. We're going to take out the A string. Okay, A string is out. Okay, once again, we're going to cut the ball off the string, hang on to it so it doesn't wind up in someone's bare foot or the cat playing with it. Next thing you know, it's by the couch and you step on it. All right, so then what we're going to do is we're going to stuff this string in this saddle between the little metal block. We're going to get it in the groove, okay, like this. Now what I'm going to do, this takes a little practice. I'm going to take my hand on the bar, and I'm going to push down on the bar, and I'm going to hold this string in place at the same time. All right, now, while keeping that string in place, I'm going to tighten this down. Try not to scratch the beautiful finish on this guitar. Nice snug fit. Got to tighten it real tight. You don't want to over tighten, but you don't want to under tighten. All right. You can tell when it's had enough. You just can tell. The only way you got to, what you got to do, man, is you got to, you got to do this. You're going to mess up a lot. You're going to screw some stuff up, but that's how you learn. All right. Now I'm going to block this thing off again. Eventually, I'll be able to take this rag out of here when there's, when there's about three or four strings on here. I don't got to worry about this rag anymore, but we're still just on two strings. So for now, the guitar's on the rag. Okay, so now we've got the A string up here. It's going to go in the, in the nut slot like this. Okay, so we're going to stick it through the tuner. If you've got locking tuners, you're going to want to unlock them and then lock the tuner all the way down and then twist the tuner. But these aren't locking tuners, so I'm just going to hold this string in place. Make sure it's on the top of the string like this, like over, okay? And we're going to get it quite tight. We're not worried about pitch right now, okay? Now, as I'm doing this, this string here loses pitch because the whammy bar is diving as I'm putting more pressure and more tension by changing by adding more strings it's gonna start making the other strings dip in pitch and that's why so many people have trouble changing Floyd Rose changing strings with a Floyd Rose is because they just can't get it tuned right all right so we snip that off I'm gonna do one more on camera then I'm just gonna get them all in there okay hopefully this is starting to make sense probably tremendously boring. I think this stuff's fun, but I'm kind of different. Okay, so I loosened up the screw on the, the D string, and that's going to slide this little block back. Okay, I'm still holding the pressure on this bar because we've only got two strings holding it right now, so it still, still doesn't like to not have a support. So we're going to put this little block support, this little rag underneath it, okay? And take out our D string. All right, so now we will cut the ball off of this string right, right here, okay? Just cut it anywhere towards the end, doesn't matter. Keep that string in a safe place, and as you can see, I've got my snipped off pieces. As you get to lighter gauge strings like the G and the B and the E. Those are the ones that are deadly <laughs> if you step on them. Okay, so now we're going to stick this down in the saddle. I'm going to push down on the bar like this. Take the rag out by hand. I'm going to tighten it down just a little bit. Take the Allen wrench. Get a nice snug fit. I'm going to get this string locked in this saddle. Again, you don't want to over tighten it. But you got to get it nice and tight, otherwise that string's going to pop out of the saddle when you're doing your Van Halen stuff or your Warren D. Martini or George Lynch screams, whatever it is. Okay, so the D string obviously goes in the next locking nut. 
slot. Okay, so now we're gonna do this. We're gonna crank it. Make sure that string is up over this. Now, some Floyd Rose systems, locking nuts, will have a metal bar right here. This one does not, okay? And that's, that's to prevent the, the guitar to go out of tune when you lock the locking nut down. Some guitars have it, some don't. This one doesn't. If yours has this metal bar that goes across here, you're gonna to wanna to put those strings under this metal bar, okay? That's all you gotta do is put them under the bar. So now that we've got that string, we're just tightening it up pretty tight. I'm gonna cut this off. Now I'm gonna stop filming. I'm gonna put the rest of the strings on this guitar and check back with you as soon as they're on there. Okay, as promised, here we go. This is the um, somewhat finished progress. We still have to do the setup part of it. I've got all six strings on the guitar. They are not in tune. The locking nut is still not in place. I've got those still in my parts bin over here, okay? Still have the back plate off the guitar, but give yourself a round of applause. You've successfully put six strings on your guitar with a Floyd Rose, okay? So here's all our, all the trauma, all the, the garbage, man, the details. But they're in, as you can see. We're not gonna worry about if this thing's level just yet, because check it out, here's what it sounds like. This thing is way out of tune, it sucks. And the action is really bad, right? But that's okay, we're about to fix all this. Remember, we put hybrid strings on this guitar and it had nines. So the spring tension on this Floyd Rose was set for nines. It was happy with nines. So now with these strings, it's probably gonna bring this bar down too far and it's not gonna be happy when we tune it to pitch. Now I'm gonna give you some tuning advice on, on uh, setting up a Floyd Rose and where to start and then some easy steps on what to do to get this thing to behave itself so you can be up and shredding in no time. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to tune this guitar to standard tuning. And I'm gonna do my best to explain how I do it when this thing is floating around like crazy. Because as I start to tune this guitar, this bar is gonna move up or down and it's gonna change pitch. And this is where most people have their struggles. And I don't really ever see this explained very well on YouTube or anywhere, so I'm gonna do my best to explain it. So we're gonna start with low E. All right, so low E, I'm gonna tune using these tuners. So when this thing stops spinning like this, then it's in tune. Okay, so it's stable, it's pretty much in tune. It's not important, we're gonna get close. We're not gonna get you know, perfect. One thing I forgot to mention is what we wanna do on our Floyd Rose. These fine tuners, we wanna set them in the middle. We don't want them touching all the way down, we don't want them all the way out. We want them about halfway between all the way out and halfway all the way in. That way, when we finally get our guitar tuned up, we have enough fine tuners to adjust our pitch. So we need these to be kinda at the halfway point, okay? That's just some good advice. All right, so back to this E. I just adjusted that fine tuner a little bit. So it's gonna be a little out of tune, okay? So we're just gonna get close. There we go, now we're gonna go to the A. Now check it out, that's an A flat. So I'm gonna get it up to an A. Close enough for now, okay? Close enough. Now check it out, I'm gonna play this low E. Look what happened, it went flat. This thing is, when that thing is spinning around like that in that direction it means it's flat. Because what I did is I tend, I remember that A was about A flat. So as I got it a little bit more uh, tense, a little more tension on that A, it brought that E flat. And that's what drives people crazy. Now, 
that A is a little flat, so I'm gonna bring that up to pitch. So that's what happens when you start tuning your guitar to the floating Floyd Rose tremolo system. You chase notes all over the place. So what I do is, you gotta know what a fourth is. You have to have relative pitch, good relative pitch. You got that E. Now relative pitch is being able to kind of, kind of know close to what the pitch sounds like without knowing exactly what it is, like perfect pitch. I went to music theory, uh, I went to college for music theory and uh, graduated uh, with a theory degree and we went through orchestration and musicianship and I had friends in my class that had perfect pitch and they could tell you what pitch the lights were humming at, which would drive me nuts. I have got relative pitch, so I can tell basically, you know, I can, I can tune a guitar pretty much from scratch and get it within probably half a step of being in standard. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna tune this guitar up in fourth. So we're gonna go to this D. Now check it out, this D sounds like it's way off. So, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tune this guitar, the D string up, let's see. Now it's a, it's a unison. There's your fourth. You can always tell fourths because it sounds like here comes the bride. So there's the fourth. Now what happened when I tuned this string up, this string was really flat. When I tune that up, this low E now is back to E flat because it's, it's pulling this tremolo bar down lower, which is causing more tension and it's bringing the strings flat. So I'm doing this just, a, I would normally do this a little bit quicker, but I'm showing you the theory and the reasoning why Floyd Roses do what they do when you tune them up. So now I'm gonna get these kind of close back to pitch. As you tune each string up tighter, the strings before it are gonna go flat. So what I do is a trick. This is the this is uh, the right way to do it in many cases, but it will take you a long, long time and it can be very frustrating. So what I wind up doing is, you know, you can do it like we're doing like this and slowly just go at it. But what I do, I can tell these strings are too flat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tune this low E really sharp. I'm gonna tune that A string really sharp, that D really sharp, that G I'm gonna go a little sharp, the B, I can just tell. And then this high E. I'm just listening to it. All right, so now these strings are much closer to the tension that they should be at. So check it out. Now we're gonna go back to this low E. Now they're not gonna move around as much. All right, so now I'm gonna tune this to E, A, Hopefully what I just did made sense. I intentionally tuned every string really sharp. So as I started to tune each string sharp, it gradually dropped the pitch of those other strings. Go back to this G string. It's harder to film than tune than you'd think. All right, so that B is sharp. I'm just trying to get it in the ballpark right now. We're not fine tuning, so we still gotta set up the Floyd Rose to be at the right uh, level. It's gotta be flush to the body. Remember, it's gotta be 
even on the body, not too low, not too high. But when we tune this up to pitch, it's gonna show us where we are with our tremolo system and how bad it is as far as setup is concerned. All right, so now we're getting close. I just wanna be in the same ballpark where I should be. If I'm not too worried about exactly being on pitch, but just really close. Because now we're really, really close to the right tension. Now, if we were going to tune it E flat or C or whatever, you would tune it to whatever. You would tune it to however you were going to tune your guitar. I'm tuning mine to standard. So we're setting this guitar up in standard. All right. So now check it out. Listen. It's pretty close. Here's the bad news. So now we got it. We got it tuned to standard. You think, oh, can you just put the locking nut bolts back on? No, you can't because now that we put these hybrid strings on it, this tremolo system is not flush to the body. This part needs to be like this. <laughs> Those strings are popping in the bridge. All right, so it needs to be flush like this. Okay. So how do we do that? Here's where we adjust the springs. So I'm going to show you the back side and we're going to adjust these springs. What we're going to do is we're going to tighten these springs up. We're going to tighten them up and it's going to pull this bar forward like this. Okay? Okay, so this is where it's a little bit of a guessing game. This is where you got to kind of play with it and try to figure out exactly what you need to do as far as the amount of tension you need. So tightening up these, these screws like this, when you tighten it to each side of them up like this, what that's going to do, it's the spring that's in this block, it's going to pull this block this way. It's tugging on it like tug of war. And what that does is, you got to remember this is the bottom of that bar it's gonna pull that bar back. Because remember, this bar is not flush, so the bar's gotta come back. So by tightening up these springs, it's gonna pull that bar back flush, and it's gonna drop the action down. The bad news is when this string pulls, when this bar goes back, it's gonna make all of our strings go sharp. So we're gonna to have to fine tune it again. And we may have to adjust the claw a little bit more. So let's adjust this claw a few twists. Now remember, this is gonna make the guitar go sharp. So it doesn't take a lot, typically, okay? Unless your bar is really, 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 really like pushed down far. This one was not that bad, okay? So I'm gonna twist each one, maybe a full twist or two, like so, okay? Now what that did is it made it somewhat more level, okay? But listen to the tuning. See if you can hear the tuning. Hear how out of tune that is now? It's because this bar moved back like this and it pulled everything sharp. So now we gotta tune the guitar again. All right, back to square one, low E. <laughs> it's registering a G flat. So that went way sharp. So now I gotta tune this down to an E, all right? Now remember, when we tune this down, guess what's gonna happen? This bar's gonna come, this bar, bar's gonna come back even farther because there's less tension. So we may, have, we may have loosened or tightened those screws up a little bit too much. So what I'm gonna do, like I said, with relative pitch, I'm gonna go down. I'm listening for the fourth. This D string was really flat. It must have popped a little bit in the saddle. So what I'm doing, 
I'm not even looking at my tuner. I'm tuning each one to fourths. The G to the B is a third. And there's the fourth. All right, cool. It's pretty close. Now, when we look at the tuner, low E went a little sharp. All right, A, we're gonna get A kind of close. Close, okay, D. Close, G. When this thing stops spinning, it's on. B, that one was way sharp, it was way up on a C. As I'm doing this though, it's gonna start moving these strings. It's gonna start pulling that bar back up so things are gonna go a little sharp. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, then. All right, now let's look at this bar. Man, that's looking really good. It's looking really good. All right, let me see if I can get this super close. This may, we may have done it. All right, so E, nope, it was up to an F. I think it's gonna move that bar a little too much. I'm gonna try to get as close as possible with, with these tuners, and then we'll get it dead accurate with the fine tuners once we lock everything down. As you keep doing this, it gets closer and closer each time. You start to dial it in. All right. Let's look and see what happened to this bar. It's still flush. A lot of times when you do this, you'll start seeing that bar come up and lose, lose its um, flushness to the body. All right. Reason not to keep doing this is as we as we uh, tune these strings down in pitch, it pulls that bar up slightly because there's less tension, and it makes the other strings go slightly sharp that we just tuned. So you gotta you kind of gotta chase it and do this dance. That's why we left our fine tuners in the middle when we lock it down we need we need fine-tuning action all right let's look and see what we look like here it's still looking good still looking good what I'm what I'm making sure is this isn't going back into the body farther than it than it already is I want it to be flush Just trying to get it close. I can really fine tune it. Okay, it's pretty much it's pretty much stopped moving fast on the tuner. It's really close. And we are quite flush to the body. It's not perfect. But it's it's close enough for me. If I wanted to be really picky, I could loosen the claw springs maybe a quarter turn and get it to be maybe just perfectly flush, but I mean it's 
it's pretty pretty darn close man and that the action on the guitar the action looks good now if I wanted to lower the action a little bit you can take these mounting screws and twist them clockwise a little bit and it, it drops the Floyd Rose into the body of the guitar just a little bit and that'll lower your action there's also a truss rod on this guitar if your neck is bowed a little bit you can twist it clockwise to tighten up and straighten the neck out if you got fret buzz up in this section you can loosen the truss rod and get rid of the fret buzz on the first few frets but that's not an issue with this guitar, so I'm not gonna worry about that right now. So I'm pretty happy with that. It's pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna take these pieces here, put them back on the locking nut, and then we'll fine tune it. Okay, now that we've got the guitar tuned really, really close to, to uh, standard 440, once you get it pretty much set and tuned to pitch, then you can put these things on and lock it down. Okay, so what you want to do is put these down so that the, the line is going the same direction as the neck, like that. There's, these things are shaped kind of like a house, so you want to put them with that line in the middle, like that. And you take your Allen wrench and you want to lock them down. You want to lock them down tight. You don't want to over tighten, but you want to get them tight enough so they don't slip, okay? When you do that, you can no longer use your standard tuners. You gotta use your fine tuners, okay? It's always handy to keep one of these wrenches tape to your guitar or your amp or in your gig bag if you're going to play with these because you're going to need these at a gig at some point. All right, the last step that you're going to want to do is with your tuner and your, uh, your tuning, your tuner, whether it's on a pedal or a tuner on your headstock, you want to go through your strings and then use your fine tuners to check your tuning. You want to get it dialed in as much as possible with your standard tuners on the headstock. As I'm doing this, I'm watching my tuner to make sure it's in tune. And there you go. We just put hybrid strings on this as opposed to nines. We got the Floyd relatively flush to the body. We did so. by tightening up these screws and putting a little bit more tension. So if you're gonna go higher gauge strings, you're gonna to have to tighten up these screws a little bit to get the bar flush. If you're gonna go lighter gauge strings, you're gonna wind up loosening those screws on the, on the claw. Takes patience, takes a little bit of uh, practice, but you can do it. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please consider subscribing comment below and as always have a great day peace out